My feet are frozen. Together. <laughs> Hi guys, we're here with your Bible reading. We hope you guys are having a good day. Hi Pink Fairy, if you are watching. She was looking at me like, that's her name on YouTube. <laughs> Pink Fairy, that's not her real name. <laughs> Subscribe to Pink Fairy, guys. Um, I just filmed her channel the other day and uh, she's got really good vlogs and everything. So you guys should go check out her channel. She was like, Pink Fairy? <laughs> That's not her real name. I'm not sure what her real name is, but her name is Pink Fairy. Pink Fairy! <laughs> You're probably wondering, what is she talking about? Pink Fairy! Uh, feet being froze together. It was really super cold this morning, and we didn't have the heat on. We had the heat turned off. And we was in bed trying to get warm, and she was like, Honey, oh, my feet are frozen together. <laughs> We just been making a joke out of it all day. He says the funniest things. But we got the heat on now, so we're getting warm. So if you guys would like to follow along today, we'll be reading um, Mark chapter 1, verse 29, reading through chapter 2, verse 12. And our psalm will be Psalm 35, verses 17 through 28. And Proverbs chapter 9, verses 13 through 18. And again, we'll be reading in the New International Version. I'm not too far. All right, let's begin. Let's see if the shrimp's doing. Okay. As soon as they left the synagogue, they went with James and John to the home of Simon and Andrew. Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever, and they immediately told Jesus about her. So he went to her, took her hand, and helped her up. The fever left her, and she began to wait on them. That evening after sunset, the people brought to Jesus all the sick and demon-possessed. The whole town gathered at the door, and Jesus healed many who had various diseases. He also drove out many demons, but he would not let the demons speak because they knew who he was. Very early in the morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up, left the house, and went off to a solitary place where he could be alone, where he prayed. Simon and his companions went to look for him, and when they found him, they exclaimed, Everyone is looking for you. Jesus replied, Let us go somewhere else, to the nearby villages, so I can preach there also. That is why I have come. So he traveled throughout Galilee, preaching in their synagogues and driving out demons. A man with leprosy came to him and begged him on his knees, If you are willing, you can make me clean. Jesus was indignant. He reached out his hand and touched the man. I am willing, he said, be clean. Immediately the leprosy left him and he was cleansed. Jesus sent him away at once with a strong warning. See that you don't tell this to anyone, but go show yourself to the priests and offer the sacrifices that Moses commanded for your cleansing as a testimony to them. Instead, he went out and began to talk freely, spreading the news. As a result, Jesus could no longer enter a town openly, but stayed outside in lonely places. Yet the people still came to him from everywhere. A few days later, when Jesus again entered Capernaum, the people heard that he had come home. They gathered in such large numbers that there was no room left not even outside the door, and he preached the word to them. Some men came, bringing to him a paralyzed man, carried by four of them. Since they could not get him to Jesus because of the crowd, they made an opening in the roof above Jesus by digging through it, and then lowered the mat the man was lying on. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralyzed man, Son, 
your sins are forgiven. Now teachers of the law were sitting there, thinking to themselves, why does this fellow talk like that? He's blaspheming. Who can forgive sins but God alone? Immediately Jesus knew in his spirit that this was what they were thinking in their hearts. And he said to them, Why are you thinking these things? Which is easier to say to this paralyzed man, Your sins are forgiven? Or to say, Get up, take your mat, and walk? But I want you to know, that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. So he said to the man, I tell you, get up, take your mat, and go home. He got up, took his mat, and walked out in full view of them all. This amazed everyone, and they praised God, saying, We have never seen anything like this. And I said, We're going to stop at the book of Mark today, guys. Pharisees, teachers of the law, the Sadducees, they just can't leave Jesus alone, can they? We're continuing on with Psalm 35 today with verses 17 through 28, Psalm of David. How long, Lord, will you look on, rescue me from the ravages, my precious life from these lions? I will give you thanks in the great assembly. Among the throngs I will praise you. I do not let those gloat over me who are my enemies without cause. Do not let those who hate me without reason maliciously wink the eye. They do not speak peaceably, but devise false accusations against those who live quietly in the land. They sneer at me and say, aha, aha. With our own eyes we have seen it. Lord, you have seen this. Do not be silent. Do not be far from me, Lord. Awake and rise to my defense. Contend for me, my God and Lord. Vindicate me in your righteousness, Lord my God. Do not let them gloat over me. Do not let them drink, aha, just what we wanted. Or say, we have swallowed him up. May all who gloat over my distress be put to shame and confusion. May all who exalt themselves over me be clothed with shame and disgrace. May those who delight in my vindication shout for joy and gladness. May they always say, The Lord be exalted, who delights in the well-being of his servant. My tongue will proclaim your righteousness, your praises, all day long. And that was Psalm 35, verses 17 through 28. In our Proverbs today, we have uh, 6, Proverbs chapter 9, verses 13 through 18. Folly is an unruly woman. She is simple and knows nothing. She sits at the door of her house on a seat at the highest point of the city, calling out to those who pass by who go straight on their way. Let all who are simple come to my house. To those who have no sense, she says, stolen water is sweet. Food eaten in secret is delicious. But little do they know that the dead are there, that her guests are deep in the realm of the dead. All right, guys, and that was Proverbs chapter 9, verses 13 through 18. And that was our Bible reading for today. I hope it touched your guys' hearts. We are going over to Brother Sherm now with our homework. And our homework question for last night was, Did you lose it? Who was on a ship with 275 passengers who fasted for 14 days? 
All right, guys, and the answer we should have came up with is... Paul. Paul. But I don't think that was the question from yesterday. Why what? I thought it was... Uh, no, I won't say. Maybe you'll read it today. Um, and our homework question for tonight is... What Roman official was fasting and praying when an angel told him to send for Peter? And you can find that in the book of... Acts. The book of Acts. And again, the question is... What Roman official was fasting and praying when an angel told him to send for Peter? That's when Peter was having those visions where um, God was telling him not to call anything unclean that he has made clean. Talking about all people being worthy to be saved. Not just the Jews, but the Gentiles. A Gentile is a person who is not a Jew. Not just the Jews are worthy to be saved, but the Gentiles as well. So after that, you know, they wanted, it took a little while. Certain people were arguing, you know, that Gentiles, you know, were not good enough. But Peter knew after he had that vision and what God said, he wasn't going to be that way. So. And then it got better and better, of course. But I don't want to, you know, say too much because I don't want to give away the answer today. All right, guys. Um, wow. Um, we are going to stop there today. We hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Let's bring those souls to Jesus, and God willing, we'll see you guys again tomorrow with another Bible reading. Bye, guys. God bless.